The greatest escape from L.A. rush hour would be a seat at Dodger Stadium. Game five between the Nationals and the Dodgers. St. Louis Cardinals are waiting on the winner of this one. Let's check in with Alex Chappell. Alex. Hey there, Ernie and Jeff. Well, the Nationals are facing elimination for the third time in eight days. Talking with Davey Martinez just a little bit ago, he said, let's not focus on any of the Game 5 history for the Nationals. How about what our ball club has done all season long? From May 24th, we only had a 3% chance to make the postseason. We did that. We won the wild card game. We won Game 4 to force a Game 5. So let's do it again tonight. Go 1-0. He told me he told his players that he packed a lot of extra clothes in his suitcase. And he said, let's keep it rolling, guys. Thank you very much, Alex. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the National, same as, as game four. Trey Turner leads it off, then Adam Eaton, Anthony Rendon, Juan Soto, the 20-year-old in the cleanup spot. A couple of veterans back-to-back, -back and Howie Kendrick and Ryan Zimmerman. Kurt Suzuki again behind the plate. Michael A. Taylor gets another start in center field. Victor Robles after that hamstring injury. Unable to get back to it, and uh, Walker Bueller gets the ball from Dave Roberts. And you can see exactly why Dave's giving him the ball. Game one, six innings, eight Ks only, one hit, three base on balls that one inning. But other than that, he was spectacular. He's on full rest, got an extra day, actually, and we all know how live his fastball is. They're expecting him to do big things and turn it over to that bullpen with Kershaw on it. And catching him tonight behind the dish. Will Smith has caught all four games other than... Russell Martin going around, Turner, Seeger, Muncy, Beattie at first. And then in the outfield, Hernandez getting the start in left tonight. Bellinger, Peterson, one thing to watch, Seeger, short, no errors the last 38 games. Been money. This guy's been money in the leadoff spot for the Washington Nationals. Trey Turner, 17-game on-base streak and has hit safely in 16 of those 17. First pitch of the game is swung on and fouled back. Trey Turner in the game four win in that elimination game scored a couple of runs was three for five and said afterwards look that's my job. Breaking pitch stays high one and one. Yeah they rely on him and Eaton to get on base steal make it a little hard on that pitcher and defense and give Rendon and Soto a chance to get some RBIs. One ball one strike and now Bueller ahead a ball and two strikes. A lot of the narrative going into this game Jeff is how important it is to score first get something on the board maybe see if you can get the wheels in motion move a runner over get that first run in and Turner. Goes down swinging to start things off here in L.A. And that's what Bueller got him with the first time back here last Friday night. That fastball right there, 97, just beats you to the spot. It's so it jumps out of his hand, and that's something that the Nats are going to have to find a way to get on top of that ball and put it in play tonight. And so Adam Eaton steps in. Three for 12 in the series, three for 15 in the postseason. Got to add that wild card game to all the Nationals numbers, and he swings right through that 0 and 1. Bueller allowed only one hit in his six innings of work, and the one time he got in trouble in that game, Jeff was in the fourth inning. He walked him loaded, but then he got as Drupal Cabrera on a comebacker to get out of the oh. trouble spot. When well, Dave Martinez said today that the Nats were going to try to be a little more aggressive early in the count to get to some of those fastballs tonight both times they've swung at the first pitch but haven't been able to put in play. Ball and a strike to Eaton who hits it right on the ground. And Beatty made the play for the second out. Yeah and right here you'll see what these hitters face six. when you talk about what Bueller yeah, has in his arsenal right here. He's got two fastballs, really a four seamer and a cutter that he works off that that slider and curveball. And that's the thing he does so well. He can get that curve at about 80 miles per hour, but still get it to 98. That's what makes it tough to face him. 
And Anthony Rendon steps in. He's four for 12 in the series. He's knocked in four runs. He's walked three times. Now there's another first pitch swing right there, but they're fouling it off. Euler to the plate that misses a ball and a strike. That's Alfonso Marquez behind the plate calling the balls and strikes tonight. There's Alfonso and we'll get the rest of the umpires to you shortly as Rendon takes outside. Trip Gibson makes the calls at first. Will Little at second. Jordan Baker at third and down the lines. Ted Barrett and left. Doug Eddings in right field. In the air to right center field and pretty well hit. Peterson goes back to the track and makes the play. Rendon gave it a ride, but it's three up and three down. MLB at Home is presented by Wendy's. Grab your breakfast fave and get another for just a buck in the morning at Wendy's. Dodgers batting order here for game five. Jock Peterson followed by Max Muncy and Justin Turner. Cody Bellinger looking for his first RBI of this series. It's cleanup. Then it's Matt Beatty, Corey Seager, Kike Hernandez, Will Smith, and Walker Bueller. Steven Strasburg gets the start for Washington. Yeah, and the big righty here held the Dodgers to one run in six innings with 10 Ks on short rest. Last time out, and you see that his postseason career, 0 0.64, 38 Ks. We all know his three pitches. The Dodgers tonight are going to have to find a way to take some of those curveballs and get in better counts. And has never allowed a home run in the postseason in those 28 oh. innings of work. Jock Peterson leading it off. A strike as Strasburg, who was so impressive in game two, was perfect for four and two thirds before Will Smith singled. Peterson goes the other way to deep left. Soto goes back, and that ball is well, let's see what Soto is saying in left field. I think it went through the fence. It looks like it might have. Yeah, I think so. Peterson takes a look over his shoulder as he hits the plate. We're going to have to take another look. Ted Barrett is going out to see Soto. Oh, yeah. And it did. It hit that, it hit that door. And wedged down in between. Wow, you don't see that much, do you? Yeah, they're definitely, they'll take a look at this. They have to, and it's going to be a double. I tell you what, Ted Barrett's had himself a couple of games working the foul lines. He had that shot by Peterson in game four that was just foul, and here, Peterson right into that swinging door in left. And that's got to be. That's got to be two bags, doesn't it? Come on. Yeah, and listen, it's another fastball, third fastball in a row. And Peterson does a great job of going the other way right there. As you see, yeah, they give him a double. But look at that. Stays back on it nice. And that's something Dave Roberts told us, Ernie, today. They got to swing at strikes. Last time we faced him, we swung at all curveballs and changeups out of the zone. Good start for the Dodgers there. Peterson had been two for 14 in his career against Strasburg, and he leads off 
with one of the strangest two baggers you'll ever see. Now here's Max Muncy. He's struggled against Strasburg. A lot of guys have. He's 0 for 12 with seven strikeouts. But he bats here with a runner in scoring position in the bottom half of the first. Talk about what the Dodgers have done with runners in scoring position in that big inning they had in game three. Remember when they scored seven, they were three for four with runners in scoring position. The rest of the series, they're one for 26. But here's a spot early to try and break through. That's going to miss again, 2-0. And like we said, the Nationals, yeah, they wanted to try to come score a run and quiet this crowd down. On the other side, the Dodgers want to come out, score a couple early, and give Bueller and the rest of that pin down there, whether it's Kershaw or whatever, the confidence to know we can do this. Peterson not much of a lead at second. And it's 3-0 to Muncy. He's homered twice and knocked in five runs in this series. He and Justin Turner, the on-deck hitter, have been doing the damage offensively. There's a strike three and one. Strasburg went six. In his start in this series, one earned run, three hits, struck out 10, didn't walk a batter, and threw 85 pitches. Including the wild card, he struck out 14 and walked nobody. In the air to right center field, Adam Eaton goes back. Adam Eaton has no chance. Two-run homer. Dodgers on top in the bottom of the first. Well, there's your two runs right there. You talk about flexing your muscles. Monty 0 for 12 with seven Ks against Strasburg. Waits gets the 3-1 pitch. Lifts and separates 2-0 Dodgers. Muncy's third home run of the series gives him seven runs batted in. A one-two punch right to the jaw of Steven Strasburg here in the bottom of the first, and Turner takes down low. That's a fastball a little bit up, but when it's 3-1 like that, Ernie, you're sitting dead red that pitch. When it's 1-2, you get a swing and miss on that pitch. Second straight hitter, it's 3-0. and And I go back thinking, talking to Dave Roberts before the game day, and he said, the one thing I'm excited about, our hitters just saw him four days ago. And you got to believe that that gives you an idea of what those pitches, we saw it last night with Justin Verlander, who's been so good, Ernie. The Rays, Kevin Cash, your manager, said we saw him four days ago. They had much better at-bats against him. Four pitch walk to Turner and to, to your point Jeff as we take another look at what Max Muncy did and the reaction in the Dodger dugout and from Jock Peterson after the ground rule double there was very little contact in his first start remember Clayton Kershaw hit a ball to the left that Soto made a great play on it was the hardest hit ball at the first time through the yeah. order. When you said just these first three hitters for the Dodgers here, you can tell it made some adjustments. 
and they're not going up there just swinging at the first thing they see. As he has heard for most of the season, Cody Bellinger hears the MVP chance from what will be 53,000 plus here in Dodger Stadium. But Bellinger just three for 15 in the series. Hasn't knocked in a run. Knocked in 115 in the regular season. Strasburg had the most wins in the National League with 18. He worked the most innings, 209. The ball and two strikes. Yeah, got the curveball in the corner right there. You can see Bellinger thought it was a bit outside. He strikes him out for out number one. First baseman number 45, Matt Beatty. Well, and there's the difference again. It's 1-2 right here, so you tend to have to chase that pitch right there. The first three guys in the lineup, Peterson, Muncie, and Turner, all were in great hitters counts and got pitches to handle. Matt Beatty, one of two rookies in this starting lineup for the Dodgers, and a decisive game five in the National League Division Series. Right up the middle, base hit. Turner will hold at second. And Beatty, like the first one he saw, and threw it right back where it came from. He didn't waste any time. Well, that first fastball down in the zone, smoked it up the middle. That brings up Corey Seager, who's another RBI guy for this team, had 87 out of the shortstop spot this year. And he doesn't have one yet in this series. And behind the dish catching Strasburg tonight, Kurt Suzuki, his fourth start of this postseason. Going around the corner, Rendon, Turner, Kendrick, Zimmerman gets a start at first after that big home run. And the outfield the same, Soto, Taylor, and Adam Eaton. Seager waiting on an 0-1. And quickly, the Washington right-hander jumps in front. Some T-Mobile extended coverage. Justin Turner walked and advanced to second on the Matt Beatty single. They stand there with one out and two runs in here in the bottom half of the first. Well, and I think that's what makes this Dodgers team so tough right here. As you look at it, you have Bellinger after his last about together. Those guys are six for 32 with no RBIs this series. But Muncie, Turner, all these other guys have picked it up for him and allowed them to hit eight home runs now this series and have the bats they're having. Runners at first and second meeting on the mound here. Jeff? Yeah, I, I think they're trying to make sure they get the signs right you know sometimes you think about a team getting your signs knowing what's going on and I think for the Nats this is a big spot you got to try to keep them at two and get them in speaking with both managers before the game Dave Roberts and Dave Martinez both stressing yeah jumping out with the first runs in this game huge it's the Dodgers who have done so here in the bottom half of the first a ball and two strikes to Seeger. Oh. 
who takes two and two. The Washington Nationals could use something they haven't had in four games here. And that's a double play ball. Rounded up the middle. The tag for one to first, and there is that first double play turned by the Nationals' defense. And it came at the perfect time for Steven Strasburg. Presented by UCLA. Trey Turner played it perfectly. The tag, the throw, two. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. Juan Soto will lead it off for Washington. Top half of the second inning after the Dodgers came to the plate and scored two off of Strasburg. And that's down low to the 20-year-old left fielder. Breaking pitch hit to left, and that ball is caught by Kike Hernandez. He got all turned around and made the play. Soto, meantime, is in between second and third and just got the bad news. Yeah, I don't think he realized how much his ball was slicing here out Soto, and he did. He turned the wrong way, but great job. So athletic he is to turn around and end up making a play on this ball. You see that right there. And instead of even the speed turn, he crossed his feet and still made the play. Now here's Howie Kendrick. Strike at the knees, 0 and 1. We've seen a couple of uh, strange things. We've seen that the Jock Peterson round rule double. Saw that in the in the bottom half of the first oh. inning. And a ball that looked like it may have been a home run, but turned into a ground rule double. And when we get a chance, we'll show it. We'll have the little interaction between the home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez and Jock Peterson. Hey. Listen up. Hey, Jock. It, it might get it might get called back if it went through the padding. Okay, just be aware. Meantime, Howie Kendrick goes down on strikes. So Alfonso Marquez, as, as Peterson is rounding the base, is kind of like, hate to rain on your parade on this one with 53,000 cheering for you, but probably going to call that one back. Yeah, I think Jock knew that it went through the thing. I think he was doing a great job of, you know, we're in Hollywood. <laughs> He's acting. It's a homer. But a big start and a big hit by him. Yeah, he would be able to trot home later was uh, Muncie. Did clear the wall and right for a two run homer. Two up and two down for Ryan Zimmerman. Oh. Zimmerman the other night had struck out a couple of times and comes up in a righty righty situation. Dave Martinez says he thought for a second about pinch hitting as Drupal Cabrera as Zimmerman slaps it up the middle for a hit. Thought for a second about pinch hitting Cabrera in that situation. Stuck with Zimmerman, and he hit a three-run homer that propelled the Nats to the win in Game Four. Yeah, and you see a fastball up. Zim's the one guy that likes that fastball up right here. You saw it versus Baez the other night, and then right here, as you said, you even asked Davy four or five seconds. He said, "No, just one." Yeah. He's my guy. And now here's a guy who's looking for his first hit of. The the postseason. Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 8 in the series. He's 0 for 11 postseason combined. And back to Zimmerman for a second. That home run he hit was the highest pitch hit for a homer by a Nat in 2019. It was nearly four feet off the ground. That information from the Statcast folks. And he went up and got it. 0-2 oh now to Suzuki. And that's what, Bueller, you can tell right now to me, 
is under control out there, kind of like we watched for Scherzer the other night back in Washington. He's not trying to overthrow. He's staying about 97. Got a nice slider curve combo. Right now, he's getting on a roll. Let's see what he deals to Suzuki. Ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. That was a big breaking pitch that Suzuki had no thought of fishing for. Bueller had the best winning percentage in the National League at 14 and 4, top 10 in ERA. Teams only hit 223 against him. Fouled back this way. And as you could tell by the sound, that was right above us. Thought that was going to be my first chance. That's against Bueller. 0 for 15 when they got two strikes. Tapped up toward third. Justin Turner on the run throws him out. And we head to the bottom half of the second in game five in Los Angeles. Let's take a look at getting more presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. And the best records in winner take all games when you've had at least four of them. Dodgers at seven and five. Cardinals making it 16 and six today. I just can't believe what we were watching when that was unfolding. I mean, you see a team score 10 runs in the top of the first in a playoff game. And they win it 13 to 1. Yeah, not even. I mean, it's game five. You know, it's it's it was a tough break. And they, I mean, when you score 10 runs like that, it, good night. It's over. So congratulations to Mike Schilt and the Cardinals into the National League Championship Series. In the air by Kike Hernandez to left center field. And that ball is gone. Kike Hernandez goes deep just out of the reach of Michael A. Taylor. And it's three to one. I'll tell you what, the right handers on this team love, love to get the ball in the air and let it go. Right here, this ball was sky high. They do a little dance right there. I had to wait to see if Taylor was doing what we've seen a few outfielders do from time to time. You go up, maybe you take one back, and you wonder, did he catch it? And they'll show you the ball. Yeah, sometimes they'll deke you, but that one right there, he wasn't able to come up with. Him. Take another look. That's a fastball. You see, as good as he was location, as you see, he just missed it. Trying to go away with that fastball right there, left it down the middle. Taylor gave everything he had. And Will Smith takes a strike one and one. So the Dodgers have come up with three runs early against Strasburg in game five. And now he continues to work on the number eight hitter. And there's a liner right into the mitt for out number one. Yeah, and there's a curveball that he threw. And you can just see right now, stuff not sharp yet. That ball kind of just hung right there. That's not the one we saw the other day. Lucky it was hit right back to him. He had one of those in game two, hit by A.J. Pollock to end an inning. So one down, one in, and Walker Bueller steps in. He was five for 59 in the regular season 
one of those five hits a home run off Michael Waka. Howie Kendrick will scoop that at second and throw him out for out number two. If you're not following MLB on social media yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Follow along on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube all postseason long. When I think, listen, there's a lot of ball game left, but Steven has to find a way to calm himself down and get sharp. You can't let the Dodgers get too many more runs, whereas the Dodgers, if Bueller got in a little trouble, we've talked about it. You got Kershaw down there. You got Maeda, who's been sharp. Dave Martinez has kind of told us today, we need Strasburg to give us some length today if we're going to be able to have a chance to win this ball game. Two down, nobody on. And Jock Peterson. Peterson, a ground rule double in the first. Not your garden variety ground rule double. This one wedging in the padding behind that swinging door next to the Dodger bullpen. Max Muncy followed with a two run homer to right. Here again is the Shot to the opposite field by Peterson. And Juan Soto would throw with the hands up and say, that ball did not leave the yard. And I think it took the umpires a second. Even Ted Barrett, who's down there in the left field, did. it's just not something it was just a, too no, it was a strange. Line. It was a strange. You figure the ball had to go over. Ball and two strikes to the Dodgers right fielder who lines a single to center. They've had so much better swings against Strasburg this time than they did in game two. Yeah, they just looked a lot more relaxed. You can see right here, there's the changeup. And it's really not a bad pitch. It's a really good pitch, but it's a great job of hitting, of going down and putting in play. And look, the first four innings in the first four games, Dodgers had two runs tonight, already in the second inning with three. That brings up Max Muncy, who had his first career hit off of Strasburg his first time. He had been 0 for 12 and then took him yard. Pitch found the mark 0 and 1. Muncy hit 35 homers in the regular season. Got three now in the post. We saw George Lombard, the Dodgers first base coach. Getting together with Peterson at first. That's in the air to center field, but he got under it. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the second. But they add another one. And Kike Hernandez got just enough to make it a 3 0 game. be better with Wendy's breakfast win with a breakfast baconator honey butter chicken biscuit sausage egg and Swiss croissant or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase tomorrow's looking good what do you think Ted Barrett the crew chief and Alfonso Marquez the home plate umpire are talking about with Dave Martinez here I have no idea but Dave's not happy about something you can tell
whatever it is, they all agree on it. it looks like they were looking down the right field line. And now, yeah, Jock Peterson is talking to Doug Eddings, the right field umpire. We will try to shed some light on that whenever the information gets our way. But we're ready to play in the top half of the third. Number eight hitter for the Nats is Michael A. Taylor. Taylor's played well since having to come in and spell Victor Robles, the starting center fielder. He's gone three for seven. Yeah, I thought we might see Robles tonight, but that's the problem when you play a premier position like center field. For and him, his whole game's running. And that hammy is barking at you a little yep. bit, yeah. Ball and a strike. Tapped foul at the plate, ball and two strikes. Jeff, you've played in a, a game five when you were with the Texas Rangers and you were on the road, and you're the one that scored first off of David Price. How big was that to, to break out on top? Yeah, we, we went up one nothing, and Cliff Lee was pitching for us with Texas, and just it gives him a lot of confidence. Taylor just reached out and slapped that to short. He's got great speed, but they throw him out. By a step. Max Muncy, nice throw for one out. Yeah, Muncy all the way over on the other He's side of the bag, close. but got him. But yeah, it lets your team calm down a little bit. You know, and I think when you looked at the Dodgers coming in, we wanted to see how they would respond tonight. As you see right there, but you wanted to see as how they would respond in the fact that, you know, I think a lot of people didn't think they'd be playing five games. You know, 106 wins, best team in the NL. But you got to give a lot of credit to the Nats for getting timely pitching when they needed it. They had Strasburg step up game two and they had Scherzer step up game four. But on the other hand Ernie you see how fresh Bueller looks out there tonight and when you don't bring a guy back on short rest and, and you let him he's actually got an extra day of rest from pitching last Thursday night. He's fallen behind 2 and 0 and now 3 and 0 to Strasburg. Bet everything you have, Frenchy, but there will be no swing right here. It's 3 and 1. Yeah, he might even take this one right here. Make him throw one more cuz you got to believe 3 2 you're still getting a fastball. Bueller gets that ball back and brings it again, and it's three and two. But he deals inside on the payoff pitch, and Strasburg draws a one out walk. Ball just kind of got away from him after two right down the middle. First walk of the night for Bueller, who was in the top five and walks per nine innings. See if the Nats can take advantage of that. Top of the order in Trey Turner, who struck out his first time. Bueller has struck out two. I'm surprised some of these Nats hitters, veteran guys, you know, Turner's not a veteran guy, but he's been around a while. Haven't tried to take more advantage of the right side of the infield right here. I mean, he did it the other night and got that easy single to first and third. Grounded to short. 
There's one. Turner with good speed beats the wrap. But two down here in the third. Number two, Adam Eaton. Not really a double play ball as Turner reached out and hit that ball to short. But two down, man at first, Adam Eaton. Let's see if Turner tries to take a chance here in a minute. No stolen bases this whole series for the Nats. No stolen base attempts. Attempt, yeah. In this postseason. And this from a team that swiped 116 bags, tied with the Cardinals for the most in the National League. They tried to run earlier in the seat in the series, and Soto was doubled off on a line drive. And a lot of time it's got to be the right count the right situation that where you can go to I will say this the Dodgers done a good job of throwing over had some left handed hitters or pitchers to keep them at bay. You don't want to just run into an out either. Stopped by Smith right here. Darn near got a piece of Adam Eaton. And the rookie catcher made the stop. Trey Turner, pretty good lead at first. Breaking pitch inside and missed two and two. Dodgers with their defensive alignment changing now as the third baseman Turner moves closer to the bag at second. And no pitch. Yeah, Beeler is not happy about it. You can see he had some words for Alfonso Marquez. Adam Eaton had requested time, a little late, but in time, in, in the mind of Alfonso Marquez, who said no pitch. And he's lucky Marquez did give him that time. If not, that's strike three right there. The 2 2 sails high in the count four. The Nationals trying to get something going here with two out. And Eaton waiting on a payoff pitch from Bueller who steps off. Ready to go, and Trey Turner will be out of the starting blocks at first, and we aren't ready to go. Now, I, it looks like they're having kind of agree on a pitch here. I think Bueller wants to throw something else. Smith wanted a different pitch. There goes Turner, and there goes a foul ball into the Dodger dugout.
National League RBI leader Anthony Rendon on deck. And he had three big RBIs in game four. I'd love the chance for him to get up here if you're the Mavs. Grounded to the left side. Seager's the only guy over there, and he throws him out. We head to the bottom of the third. Third oldest ballpark in baseball behind Fenway and Wrigley. Dodger Stadium played their first game in 1962 here. As pretty as ever. Justin Turner takes a strike leading off the bottom half of the third. There's a special special vibe in this place and very distinctive stadium and all of that and Jeff Renker loved to hit here. It's also true. How can you not with the weather. It's beautiful every day. Great playing surface too. I've always said one of the best in the league. They do such a great job with it. A couple curveballs here. I was seeing if Strasburg tried to start working in last game in game two. He threw the second lowest percentage of fastballs all year and counts and the third highest percentage of curveballs. Couldn't get Turner to offer at that 0 2. Ball and two strikes. Turner walked in the first while the place was still shaking after the Max Muncy two run homer. See Turner's jerseys always got that pine tar from how he holds the bat. They're, they sell jerseys here with that pine tar look on them. It's perfect. Ball and two strikes. And that's the first where Ryan Zimmerman will take it himself. One down. For 35, Cody Been a great start for the Dodgers in this one, leading 3-0. Everything's going their way. The only thing that remains a bit of a concern is the performance of the guy at the plate, Cody Bellinger. Yeah, him and Seeger both. You see the postseason career at home. You know he'd love to go on to the next round and get a chance to fix that a little bit. Never homered in the postseason in this ballpark. And you can see the spray chart why they're shifting that way. But in the outfield, I thought Bellinger's done a good job of staying gap to gap this year. You're just joining us, Steven Strasburg, getting the start for Washington, a guy who, in his postseason career, 28 innings, had never given up a home run, and he's given up two here tonight. Max Muncy and Kike Hernandez. It's a 3 nothing game. Ellinger fouls that back. Rossberg with a 1 2 to Bellinger. And we'll do it again. Is that good change up right there? Peterson got it for a base hit last time. That's something he's been so good at. Hitters are hitting 1 for 16 coming into this game against the curveball and change up this postseason, the Dodgers. Another one two off the chest of Howie Kendrick 
and into right field. Bellinger reaches. We'll see how they score. That just went right between his legs right there. Never even hit anything. Be an E4. And that is the, the third error committed by the Nationals in this series, and all of them have been by Howie Kendrick. Two of them came when he was playing first base. This one happens as he plays second and was in shallow right in that Washington defensive alignment. So Bellinger's on for Matt Beatty. Beatty swung at the first pitch and singled his first time. Beatty played 99 games as a rookie, hit nine home runs, 46 runs batted in. Had a walk-off home run to his credit in June. Twelfth round, he was signed out of Belmont University. You don't always have to be a first or second rounder out there. There are some gems to be found. Dodgers have had a knack for doing so. Oh! Pretty good bluff over there by Bellinger, who was 15 out of 20 in the regular season and their biggest stolen base threat. Yeah, he took one the other night. You've seen him. I wouldn't be surprised the next couple pitches to see him take off. He's got great speed. And there he goes. Breaking pitch. And Bellinger swipes it with ease. I right, picked the perfect pitch to go on to a breaking pitch right there with his speed no chance to throw him out. I can't hear you, Easy That's stolen base. And you saw Turner as he applied the tag and held it on him just in case Bellinger would pop off the bag but he held it. So an opportunity for Beatty with a runner in scoring position. Oh. One, re one reason Beatty's in there tonight, he's one of the best off-speed hitters in all of baseball. And we saw in game two how many curveballs and change-ups Strasburg through and I think this was Dave Roberts saying hey we know it's going to be a lot of off speed stuff here you go and he smoked the first about so part of the decision making that goes into who's going to start here in a game five I mean AJ Pollock's a guy who was in Dave Roberts starting lineup from the beginning of the series but hitless with a bunch of strikeouts and he wasn't going to go back in that direction in game five, even though Pollock has great career numbers against Strasburg. Yeah, and listen, he'll be, if they go to the NLCS, he'll be back in there, but tonight it's one game. You got to put your hot, people, hot guys out there. Tapped up toward first, and it's foul. Dodgers got two in the first on a Jock Peterson ground rule double and a Max Muncie homer. Kike Hernandez started off the bottom of the second. Going deep off Strasburg. Now the Dodgers trying to add to that three nothing lead here in the third. They've got Bellinger at second reached on an error stole second. And Beatty who singled his first time standing in. You've seen Bellinger's speed. Three balls and two strikes.
Another thing to watch is that pitch count up there. 51 pitches already in the third inning. But that error by Kendrick. Got to figure that's going to add. Five, six, seven, eight pitches this inning to his work. Tap toward first. Zimmerman will win the race as Bellinger moves to third. And he's there with two down. And Jeff, you know, in a, in a game five situation like this, you can talk all you want going into the game about, well, on paper, it looks like this, and it looks like this, but then. Here comes an error that leads to, you know, another opportunity. You saw it in Atlanta today, how big it was. And it was a, there was a Freddie Freeman boot in the first inning in the middle of that 10 run explosion by the Cardinals. You never know how the ball's going to bounce one way, what a pitcher's going to have or not have. And if a team's going to be able to do damage against a guy who held him in check, and that's what the Dodgers have been able to do against Strasburg. And that sails high to Seeger. 1-0. Well, we saw him pitch in game two. Besides that last inning, I mean, it was stress-free for him. Just going out there, throwing, coming right back in. Tonight, it's been the complete opposite. And an error like that, all of a sudden, you got a guy in scoring position, and you got to make a pitch. Dodgers bidding for their third straight trip to the World Series. To get there, you got to obviously win in this round the division series and trying to avoid becoming the team with the most wins to ever lose in the division series. The Yankees and A's both won 103 in 2002, both lost in this round. Dodgers with 106 wins taking the distance into game five here at Dodger Stadium. Great job by Suzuki to keep that ball from going to the screen and allowing the fourth Dodger run to score. Yeah, and you see he's going a lot of fastball changeups right now. Doesn't look like he's got the confidence in that curveball that he did last Friday night here at Dodger Stadium. That's Paul Menhart, the Nationals pitching coach, keeping a close eye on Strasburg and Cody Bellinger halfway down the line, dancing off a third. Watch Bellinger. And that was a, a hair late. Earlier on, he was jumping up and down off that with that lead. Well, and it's smart right here. You want to get off with Rendon all the way back. No one can pick you off and if there's a pass ball. Seeger goes down swinging, leaves Bellinger at third. We head to the fourth. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. Here's the spin rate on Bueller's fastball. You can see the one we saw he struck out Turner on right there. And it just explodes out of his hand. And he's a big guy, Ernie. We saw him before game one, and he talked about that spin rate. It's a big deal to him. You've heard Kershaw talk about it. Statcast AI powered by AWS. I'm telling you, Francoeur and spin rate, just like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I think I need a whole lunch with him to figure out the whole spin rate thing that he was talking to me about, but works for him. Anthony Rendon fly ball right field one down. Authentic on field caps tees jerseys hoodies and more get all your division series gear and suit up with your team at the official source MLB shop.com. 
Here's Juan Soto who flat out to left hit the ball really well a ball that was tailing away from Kike Hernandez who took a little bit of a different route to get it but flagged it down to lead off the second. him up one and one Alex what you got EJ Walker Bueller talking about the pressure of playing in game fives and he said we're just excited you got to spin the pressure the right way that just makes it more fun Max Muncy adding to that saying how big mental attitude is in this type of game he said big moments big games you got to relax and just play just easy right guys <laughs> shallow left field Seeger back and he can't make the play. He and Hernandez collided. And Soto's at second. Number 47, how he can. Yeah, that's a ball right there. We'll see the replay, but Hernandez coming in. Seeger had to go a long ways for that ball. Looked like he just knocked it out of his glove. It looked like Seeger had it. And just couldn't hold it. Yeah that's one right there where Hernandez has got to come in and call him off right there you got to come in screaming you see right here when he stopped that's where you just yell and you keep coming right there as an outfielder. Yeah there was a late call you could see by Hernandez. But then it's too late because Seeger's already there. It's like when you do spring training that's you know the outfielders always call off the infielders. It's a e tough play. E6 in the books as Kendrick. Swings and misses. So a chance for Washington. Get on the scoreboard. Take advantage of that. L.A. misplay. To center field and pretty well hit. Bellinger goes back at the track. Leaping and he made that catch. Cody Bellinger. A gold glover out there in center field. And he made that one look easy. Wow, he was kind of playing shallow too and had to run a long ways for this ball. Look at that. He knows exactly where the wall is. And then not only that, Ernie, he gets right off that wall and fires an absolute strike to third base. And I was just about to say that might be the break Washington needed. And then the possible MVP makes a play like that. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. Took something off and Zimmerman way out in front 0 and 1. Another look. Perfectly timed. And then threw a seed from center field. And Soto was in that in between kind of space right there. Yeah. It's so tough because you got to make sure you score if the ball gets over his head. And I just think the way Bellinger was running there, I think Soto towards the end thought for sure that ball was at least going to go off the wall. And then by the time he could get back as I said Bellinger quick play got up and threw it in. No chance. Oh no. Go. Tried to check his swing. The trip Gibson. Says you win. One and two. There's that cutter right there that he threw and Zim knew it right away too. Soto with a lead at second. Oh. <laughs> Boy, Will Smith held it right there. It's a tough pitch to lay off right there but definitely a ball out. 
tried to bring it back in. Veteran move by the rookie catcher. The 2-2. Two -two. Zimmerman singled his first time. Yeah, I got to believe here you're going to see that cutter or that curveball right here. You already tried the high fastball. We saw Ryan hit a home run in game four and then a single up the middle. He likes that high elevated heat. See if they try to stay away right here. And strike three called to Zimmerman. Zimmerman thought it was up. Jeff, some uh, total motion presented by Progressive. This guy can go get him, Cody Bellinger. That was in game four, and this was tonight, moments ago. Yeah, and if you really have watched him all season, even if you've only seen the highlights on SportsCenter, I got to believe this guy's about to win his first gold glove this year. He has been excellent out there. Here's Kike Hernandez. And we talked last inning about Kike, Kike coming in trying to catch that ball, call them off at the end. Only his fifth start in left field. So hasn't had a lot of experience out there, but you saw why they wanted his bat in the lineup tonight. And we saw that the other night too when they had the big seven run sixth and he was right in the middle of that in a pinch hitting roll. Gets the start tonight. Takes Strasburg for a ride to lead off the second. We're playing in the bottom half of the fourth a three nothing game. The winner gets the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Championship Series. And so Jeff what do you reckon the Cardinals are sitting in Atlanta now. Waiting to see if they're going to go home and host Washington or head to the coast and play the first two against the Dodgers in L.A. If, if that's the way it turns out. Yeah they might still be drinking champagne probably took their time. Two balls and a strike to Hernandez who was out in front two and two. And see that's the good curveball there 83 a tick up. I feel like earlier in the game he was more 80 81. The other night when he was throwing so well it was about 84 85 even at times. The 2 2 is hit to center field. Where Michael A. Taylor squeezes it for out number one. I'll tell you what, you used to have a night game in LA, and anytime a ball would go up in the air, for the most part, it was an out. And now, just with the baseball this year and the home runs, every time a ball goes up, you hear everybody. They think it's gone. And I, I mean, it looks like it has a chance every time. Here's Will Smith. Lined right back to the pitcher his first time. First round pick out of the University of Louisville back in 2016. Had a couple of walk off homers in the month of June. Hit 15. And this is rookie season. Look down at Trip Gibson who says Smith swung. Trip Gibson by the way first base umpire. His first division series. Forget sometimes how important. These moments are for these guys too. As they. Work their way through and. You got a guy like Ted Barrett who's been. An umpire in four World Series and been a crew chief before. Trip Gibson in his first division series as he works the right field line in this heart, excuse me, works first base in this one. 
He thought this had a chance for seven, eight, nine to be a quick inning for Strasburg right here. 10, 12, 13 pitches. Get yourself back in the dugout and see if the offense can come out and get you a couple and get back in it against Bueller. Nats will have the bottom of the order in the fifth against Walker Bueller. Good eye. Smith watched that one all the way into the glove. Three yeah. and two. Yeah, worked it all the way back after taking a curveball, swinging at one a good bit outside. Work this thing back to 3 2. Steve, right three called. Two up and two down here in the fourth. That's a tough one right here. Not that he's meaning to, but that was kind of a front door. Back up on him a little bit as a hitter. That's so tough. We saw Zimmerman last inning. It's tough to pull the trigger on it. NBA opening night presented by Auto Trader returns to TNT when Zion Williamson and the Pelicans pay the defending champion Raptors a visit, followed by LeBron against Kawhi and the new look Clippers in the Battle of LA. Check your local listings. We'll be out here on the 22nd for opening night. All right. Clippers, Lakers. Figures to be some pretty entertaining hoop. With the additions those teams have made. Here's Bueller. Strasburg looking for his first one, two, three inning. And he's a strike away from that. You said we, am I coming out here to do the NBA stuff too? We we TNT. Oh, okay. I did play in ninth grade. If you were anything like you were on the football field and the baseball field at Parkview High School, then I'm sure they loved having you on there. No, I couldn't shoot to save my life. A ball and two strikes. And there is that one two three inning for Strasburg. But the Nats being shut out in L.A. MLB at home is presented by Wendy's. Grab your breakfast fave and get another for just a buck in the morning at Wendy's. Walker Bueller working on 20 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings in his postseason career and you see how much more efficient he has been in this game than he was in game one when he was lights out. Yeah he ran that fourth inning last time he ran in trouble when he walked three guys but he's only had one inning where he's had to really work and that was the last inning and it was because of an error. Beauty of a breaking pitch to start off Kurt Suzuki it's 0 and 1 Suzuki. Rounded out his first time. He's 0 for 9 in the series. Oh. Unflappable 25 year old Walker Bueller. And he gives you the impression, Jeff, that it's a. The pulse hardly registers. Well, you can tell it. he's under control out there. You know, he's not really gassed it up. I mean, he's just pitching within himself and doing exactly what he did in game one. I said, this feels like game one. Two balls and a strike. Hey.
Powell back to the screen just did get a piece. Back in 2012 the Pirates had their eye on Walker Bueller and drafted him in the 14th round. He didn't sign. He went to Vanderbilt. Came out of Vandy and found himself a number one pick. Number 24 overall in 2015. And would make his major league debut two years later. I would say that was a smart move. <laughs> well he's a Vandy guy. Well and, and Tim Corbin <laughs> at Vandy they pump him out up there. Seems like they have a couple first rounders every year. All right. Don't know exactly what to say about that. But oh no! If that's one of those comfort dogs, then he's doing his job. It's a three nothing lead. Yeah. See here, that Kurt definitely held up. Nationals need traffic on the base paths, and they will get a leadoff walk to Suzuki. Taylor. Second walk given up by Bueller. He allowed a hit to Ryan Zimmerman in the second. Juan Soto gone on on an error in the fourth. But the Nats stranded him at second. Taylor bounced to Muncie his first time and takes a strike 0 and 1. Patrick Corbin has yeah. been saddled with both losses for the Nationals in this series. One as a starter, one out of the pen. And they got no choice at this point right here. Somehow you get second and third with Strasburg up next. Ooh, that ball. It's off the plate right there, but got the call. At some point, you got to try to score a couple runs. And no one's hitting that pitch right there. Well, Taylor didn't want to. Slapped into center field for a base hit. So Taylor against the shift, poked one into center. And the first two hitters are on. Well you see right there where Muncie's playing right there. As we said that was an opportunity. Turner some other guys we watched. Pulled the ball. This one right here you see. He just stuck his bat out there. He's had the whole right side. And now you kind of catch a break because you get Strasburg to bunt him over. To get second and third and you're able to keep him in the game. That was the first. Hit with a two strike count for the Nats off Bueller. So the runners lead from first and second and. No oh, snap throw back to second. Uh, Strasburg laid off on the bunt attempt. It's one and zero. Oh. He had five sacrifices in the regular season. Laid one down in game two of this series as well. It's a big inning right here. Strasburg trying to get them over with the top of the order. Trey Turner waiting on deck. Then he pulls back. But takes it for a strike, one and one. You know, we saw Clayton Kershaw a lot the other night. He was doing all those things that made you think he was a possibility out of the pen. And Dave Roberts has said when he needs to go to the pen, he would like to piggyback Kershaw and Bueller. Bueller missed again, two and one. Well, and this is, I think, where it's the first time where it's really interesting to see how the Dodgers are going to play this. I personally still feel Walker Bueller's in complete control right now. You know, 70 pitches. He's run into a little trouble here. He might have to pitch himself out, might give up a run or two, but you wonder at what point he's going to go down there and go to Kershaw. Oh. It is three and one.
It's going to be tough right here, but this can't be just an automatic take because then if you get to 3 2, you really, as much as I'm sure he'd love to walk, you've got to get these guys over to second and third right here. He pulled the bat back and again a called strike. Three and two. Gonna try to lay one down with two strikes. He does. It's foul. Goes in the books as a strikeout. Runners stay at first and second. Rosberg did himself no favors. And it's the same pitch he threw him on the one before. Had to go after this one. He was going to call it a strike. But that's an area where I remember Bobby Cox all the time when I was with Atlanta have Smoltz and those guys working on those bunts all the time. Help yourself out right there. Now Turner, instead of having second and third, is going to have to drive him in. A ball with no strikes as Trip Gibson says no swing from the Nats leadoff hitter. Turner struck out in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the third. And it's Strasburg's defense right there, Ernie. That was a tough couple pitches to bunt. And he was painting on that outside corner at 98. He took a couple for a ball, then he got one called a strike, so uncomfortable too. Breaking pitch fouled off at the plate. T Mobile extended coverage here in the top half of the fifth inning. Kurt Suzuki walked to start the inning. Michael A. Taylor with three Dodgers on the left side. Shot one up the middle. Right of the bag. To put runners at first and second. Strasburg fouled off a bun attempt for strike three, and that brings us up to Trey Turner. Balls and two strikes. The last time he, during the fourth inning, was the inning that Walker Buehler had to really grind it out. Three walks, had to make a big pitch to get it out. You get the feeling this is that inning right here where he needs to make a couple pitches here. And on the other side, if you're the Nats, you got someone's got to come up with a big hit here between Turner and Eaton. In that game, when he walked the bases full, he got Cabrera. The ground back to him and get out of the inning. He tried to check, and that's strike three. Second strikeout of the night for Trey Turner. It's that cutter right there. Yeah, he definitely went. Meeting on the mound is broken up, and Adam Eaton will step in. Nats have gotten the runner into scoring position for the second straight inning. Couldn't chase anybody home in the fourth. Bellinger made a great catch in center field, and Zimmerman struck out. And now with two on and two out, it's up to Adam Eaton. So just as we had shown you 
how many fewer pitches he had thrown than his first appearance of this series. He's had to throw a few in this frame, but is now a strike away from getting out of it. And that was a big thing coming in the game tonight. We said the Nats got to find a way to get Turner and Eaton on a couple times for Rendon and Soto. So far, Bueller's done a good job of getting those guys out, and Rendon and Soto both come up twice tonight with nobody on base. In the air to right field. And Peterson has room. The Dodgers continue to lead 3 0. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. The 2019 National League Division Series is presented by us. Bottom half of the fifth inning, Dodgers on top, 3-0, and send the top of the order to the plate against Steven Strasburg. Strasburg giving up two in the first on a two-run homer by Max Muncy. And a solo shot in the second by Kike Hernandez. That's been all the scoring. In this decisive game five with the winner moving on to face the St. Louis Cardinals for the National League crown. Peterson takes a strike 0 and 1. And this game started the exact way the wild card game did last Tuesday night, if you think about it. Two batters, two nothing. Off Scherzer tonight, Strasburg the same thing. He's done a good job of settling down. He's got to find a way to keep him in the game right now. To give Washington a chance to try to score some here late. You're really similar to the way that wild card game started against the Milwaukee Brewers. And a grand all homer to make it 2 0, and then a leadoff homer in the second by Thames. Tonight, a leadoff homer in the second by Hernandez. And then that was it. I saw Milwaukee scored the whole game, and of course, we all know the big hit by Soto. But you're running out of time. No balls, two strikes to the Dodgers leadoff hitter. Peterson doubled in the first, singled in the second. That double in the first round rule and the ball that looked for a second like it might be gone, but wedged in the blue padding in the bullpen door. And Jock feast on right-handed pitching. I mean, that's he's a true platoon guy when you talk about it, including this postseason where he hit one. He's all 37 home runs against right-handed pitching. I think he's only had close to maybe 49, 50 ABs against left-handers all year. Sales upstairs, two and two. Strasburg threw 85 pitches in his six innings of work. In his first appearance against the Dodgers, and it's pitch number 80 on the ground to Turner. One down. 
Let's go to our Atlanta studio. Casey Stern, what you got? Still not believing what we saw in that, and and we were getting ready. We were up here in the in the booth doing some work when that inning started, and saw a couple of runs score. By the time we had gotten downstairs to pre prepare to meet with Dave Roberts, the Dodgers manager, you and I and the whole Dodgers every team. Every Dodger we saw in the clubhouse, it was everybody's jaw was on the floor. Couldn't believe that. We were watching a 10 run top of the first. Max Muncie has homered and flied out. This guy has been one tough out, that's for sure. And that's the thing tonight. You look between Peterson, Muncie, and Turner. That's as good of a one, two, three to go through the lineup. It's tough to navigate through that. Oh. Tried to sneak that one in the back door, but stayed outside. There's Muncie with the 18th inning walk off against Native Aldi in the World Series last year. And has homered three times in this series. The Bleacher Report app connects you to the moments that matter faster. Follow your friends and give your take on highlights, scores, and more. Download the BR app today. Well, Muncie's That's first. That's what I was bat. just talking about right there. there you Frenchie, go. the BR app. <laughs> Have to do it. I was a little off in my read. I, my timing was a little off there. My bad. Muncie's timing is never off, by the way. Well, I, I was, was going to guarantee you he ain't, he wasn't going to get a curve uh, fastball right there. First time up, 3-0, took 1-3 to get to 3-1, and then he hit a home run. Right here, you got the 3-1 curveball right off the bottom of his foot. Any foul ball off any part of the foot is no fun. One of the distinctive features of Dodger Stadium, you see it right there, those seats behind home plate. Put you right in the action here. Grounded to first. Perfect hop for Zimmerman. And that's two up and two down. Third base is Justin Turner. Seven straight, retired now by Steven Strasburg. And the only the only base runner has been the after the Bellinger reached on the error by uh, Howie Kendrick that came in the third I mean he gave up the home run in the second a Peterson single. But since then, it's only because of that error on Kendrick that there's been a runner on for the Dodgers, who lead it 3 0. Yeah, he's come back, and I thought has got a better idea of his off speeds, throwing his curveball in better location, but unfortunately gave up a couple early. And right now, Walker Buehler is riding that momentum wave of what we talked about, getting a few early and settling him down. is going to be another one two three inning as soon as Kendrick squeezes that one five innings in the books in decisive game five TBS total motion is presented by progressive as you get a good look at Walker Bueller who has shut out the Washington Nationals through five innings and he is making his way up the charts with that consecutive scoreless inning streak 
right now at 21 and two thirds Jerry Royce on top followed by Sandy Koufax and he just passed Oral Hershiser and he pitched around an error in the fourth inning and then last inning first and second was able to sit down Strasburg Turner and Eaton. Rendon is flied out to right twice and there's a shot to left field. That'll be down there in the corner. Kike Hernandez hustles it in but Rendon a leadoff double here in the sixth. On the field of Juan Soto. That one backed up on him right there. He's trying to go away and Rendon so patient. Compact hits the double down the line and here's the third inning in a row now where the Nats have something going. Let's see this time with Soto and Kendrick coming up if they can take advantage. Soto's 0 for 2 flied out to left hit that ball pretty well to Hernandez when he did and reached on an error in the fourth. Nats down 3 nothing. Oh what a cut Soto had. And then there was the patented look at him shake the head after that cut look at this right here. <laughs> Not of the head. You saw Rick Honeycutt the Dodgers longtime pitching coach on the phone to the bullpen. As quickly Euler goes ahead of Soto 0 and 2. This is where Soto is tough right here because he spreads out a little bit wider with two strikes here. Really gives him a better idea of the zone. Kevin Maeda, who's been brilliant in this postseason. Rendon, the runner at second after the first extra base hit allowed by Bueller in this series, and Soto slaps it to right field. Rendon around third, and the Nats are on the board. Soto knocks him in, and it's three to one. Yeah, see here, starts him off. Big old cut right here on that slider. Paints a fastball right there. Goes up right there and then couldn't really get on the same page and then he hangs that cutter right in the middle trying to go in. It backed up. It's the first sign of life for the Nats tonight. It brings up Howie Kendrick. Who drove Bellinger all the way to the wall his last time. Bellinger making the play. So the Nationals break through here in the sixth. Lead off double by Rendon. Run scoring single by Soto. And you can see that Soto again how he spreads out right there. He's so wide yet he's so strong so he's able to stay on those legs and still drive it. Kendrick struck out in the second before Bellinger robbed him in the fourth. Always been a good hitter. And he was fooled there had a big cut one and two. There's that cutter that time. It's kind of what he wanted to do to Soto before he got the base hit. And with Maeda down there with Zimmerman, Suzuki, Taylor, those righties, 
That's what he's up for. And we think we both agree, Ernie, that if they bring Kershaw, they want him to bring him in in a fresh inning. Broke his bat to second. There's one. There's two. Four, six, three double play. See that pitcher cut her away again right there. And easy four, six, three. And you can see how much they trust him right now. Even after the double by Rendon, the single by Soto, they didn't go out and talk to him. They had trust that he would get the job done, and that's why he's still there. 93 pitches. So in a 3-1 game now, nobody on, two out, oh. and Zimmerman who singled and was called out on strikes in the fourth. Of course, it was Zimmerman with that electrifying three-run homer the other night in front of the home folks in Washington. As the Nationals stayed alive, they opened the doors to Nationals Park tonight for a viewing party. So hey to all the Nats fans in D.C. who are rooting long distance. Hey. Second time tonight that Zimmerman's had that look on his face like really. Yeah, he's giving him that corner right there. The dealer's credit he's hitting it and staying out there. You saw Taylor kind of make an adjustment and go the other way. Zim's probably going to have to do the same. Struck him out to end the sixth. The Nats finally get on the board. We head to the bottom half. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, leading the way with tires that deliver superior performance in clutch situations. Goodyear, more driven. We are zipping right along here in game five. Bottom half of the sixth. Cody Bellinger to lead it off. Struck out in the first, reached on an error in the third, and stole a bag. Dodgers lead it 3 1. Three nets on the right side as Bellinger took a huge cut and came up empty. And I got to believe this is Strasburg's last inning right here. He's up third. See them warming up Rainey. I think if they need help to get a out of an inning here for now. But really hoping he gets through this inning is the game plan. On the ground and into right field, base hit. Bellinger got it through the shift. Yeah, he tried to go fastball, I think, in, try to elevate it, and that one crept right back over the middle of the plate. First base to Matt Beatty. And I think another scenario right here where they're going to have to keep an eye on him. Was, they know Suzuki's got a little bit of a bum shoulder back there. He's going to pick a pitch and go, I would imagine, sooner than later. Bellinger ran on a breaking pitch. His last time easily stole second. His second stolen base of this series. And there he goes again right away. And again, a breaking pitch. And again, he steals it with ease. Bellinger wasting no time. 
And we talk is. all, yeah, sorry, Ernie, but we talk about how good Washington is at stolen bases. Washington hasn't stole a base yet this series. That's the fifth for LA. Yeah, the, the Nats stole about twice as many bases in the regular season as the Dodgers did. But in that category, in this series, they all belong to L.A. The pitch to Beatty was a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Well, that ball was hard hit. And what a play down the right field line. You remember back, I think, in game two, the left field line made good plays. They got athletes <laughs> here. Tough carom right there. Nice. Nice play. And we got the thumbs up in the whole bit. So it's a ball and a strike to Beatty. He yanks that one well foul. Yes, sir, Clayton Kershaw. Loosening in the Dodger bullpen. And yeah, Dave Roberts said he wanted to piggyback. There's his chance right now. Bellinger. Took a break off the bag. Scampered back after Strasburg took a look. He may have been thinking about swiping third with nobody out. at that for out number one. The MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Utz Snacks, the crunch that connects us all, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Great crowd tonight. Once again, better than 53,000 in each of the first two games here at Dodger Stadium. As Corey Seager stands in. It was funny earlier this week talking to Dave Roberts. I said, You ever get starstruck when you're managing in a ballpark like this where a a lot of the big names come out. He was like, only one time when I saw Ice Cube at the game. <laughs> There's Dave Winfield. Everybody's got their yeah. person that. He said, oh, I grew up with, you know, man, this was huge. That up top, Seeger still hitless with runners in scoring position, looking for that first RBI. He's three for 18 now in the series, 0 for 2 tonight. Bellinger's out there at second. Oh no! No! We'll take a look down there at third, and Jordan Baker says, "Yeah, he went." Fans don't agree. Close enough that you you can ring him on that one. Here you see Tanner Rainey and Patrick Corbin. And Seeger goes down swinging for the second time tonight. Hernandez. There's that curveball. 
Like I said, after the second inning, you feel like he really got a grip on that. And it's been locating. It's been tough sledding since then. That's 99 pitches for Strasburg, and number 100 will come to Kike Hernandez. Give Dave Roberts credit. Push the right button here tonight with a, a start. First one of the series for Hernandez in left field. He responded with a second inning home run. Flight out to center in the fourth and made a circus catch off of Soto earlier in the game. Yeah, and I think if Hernandez or Smith get out here, we're going to find out how many innings Kershaw's going. Because if they double switch, then I think you're looking at two innings for him. If not, with his spot coming up in the lineup, Ernie, it might just be a one inning relief appearance. Let's take a look at StatCast AI powered by AWS. Look at that launch angle, 40 degrees. And you see it, Turner. Hernandez, those guys, they love versus right-handed pitchers to get that ball in the air, and you can see why right there. Yeah, Taylor had plenty of time to camp under that and try to make the leaping catch at the wall. I like his dancing with Russell Martin better than anything. That put the Dodgers on top, 3-0. Nats have scored once, and that's where we stand in the bottom half of the sixth inning as Strasburg tries to put him away. And that ball is yanked foul. <laughs> Hernandez will always be remembered by Dodger fans for the three homer game, a game five clincher against the Cubs. In the NLCS game, they won 11 to 1. They had a game five against these Washington Nationals back in 2016. That was in Washington, and Kershaw came out of the pen in that game. Got his only career save that night in a 4-3 win. Popped him up. But that's going to be a couple of rows deep. And then bouncing about 15 rows further. It almost hit Alex down there. Right over Alex, right over underdog. Joe Underhill. Yeah, there you go, Alex. Actually, underdog has stepped away. I know. I lost him. No, but uh, we almost had it. We <laughs> almost had it, guys. <laughs> well, I saw, yeah, you, you made a, a gallant effort for that one, Alex. <laughs> oh, and two. Oh, no. Try to go with the change up there, get him out front. See the drop on that right there. Hernandez almost went, he went a little bit, but was able to hold up. And if you're Strasburg, you're telling yourself, make one more pitch. You might have gave up a couple home runs early, but at the end of the day, you kept your team in the game and Give them a chance. Bellinger after the leadoff single and stolen base still out there at second. As Hernandez strikes out. Strasburg allows a leadoff single and strikes out the next three. Beeler back out for the seventh. Let's take a look at a couple of the strikeouts tonight right here. First inning blowing it by Turner. Right here, you see the slider right there to Howie Kendrick, and right here, a big strikeout to Zimmerman on a curveball. It's had a great night so far, and 
That's why Dave Roberts sent him back out there for some more. Six K's on the night for Walker Bueller. Who allowed a run in the sixth after a leadoff double by Rendon and a one scoring single by the cleanup hitter Juan Soto. That was pitch number 99 as he faces Kurt Suzuki. Seven, eight, and nine due up here in the seventh. Well, they were the ones that got it going in the fifth. Walking a hit by Taylor, got first and second. They weren't able to do anything with it. Yes, Strasburg couldn't get a bunt down. That was a strikeout. Turner struck out, and then a, a flyout by Adam Eaton ended the threat. So they've had a couple of chances. Finally cashed in in the sixth. The one two from Bueller and he hit him. Oh no. Jeff, watch this. Suzuki. It gets his wrist first. Which you're definitely glad it, it took some of the speed off, but it, from there you can tell it went up. And the way you're looking, it probably got him somewhere in the eye, the nose. And you saw Mike Rizzo, the Nationals' GM, looking on. Suzuki now is sitting at home plate. Looks like he got the other side of his face. Yeah, the ball knocked his helmet off. But I, I don't know if it's so much his face as, as he's just whether it's a concussion or buzz he, he's having a tough one. Mm. And you won't find many better guys in the game than Kurt Suzuki either. Hate to see that. So, a sobering way to begin the bottom half of the seventh inning is Suzuki off the wrist and up high off his head. And Jan Gomes will run for him at first. As Clayton Kershaw continues to warm up in the Dodger bullpen. And here's Michael A. Taylor. Man, Frenchie, that is just so scary. And the sound is tough to take. I wish the best for Suzuki as the Washington training staff will look him over. Taylor fouls it away, 0 1. 
Well, as he said, I'm just glad it hit the hand for his sake to take a lot of it off that. You know, you can look at it. You hate that it happened that way to begin with at all, but. I'm thinking of all the things that could happen. The there. worst. Yeah. Taylor watches that one down and away, one and one. As Drubal Cabrera has a bat, he would hit for Strasburg. One and two. The well, last time with two strikes, Taylor got something away and just punched it to right field. Let's see what he does here. Probably going to get the same type of pitch. If you have three Dodgers on the left side, and Taylor was able to shoot one into center, right of the bag. This is fouled away. And the Dodgers have led from the start as much as three nothing. But a swing of the bat away from tying things up as Taylor represents the tying run here in the top half of the seventh. Good take. Two and two. Yeah, down in the Dodgers bullpen, Kershaw's it. So whenever Dave Roberts decides to make that move, he's your guy. The 2 2. Taylor goes down swinging for out number one here in the seventh. Big pitch right there. He sticks with the cutaway, got him to lay off a curveball the pitch before Taylor did a good job. That one couldn't lay off. Strikeout number seven for Bueller, who's had this year. A 16 strikeout game against Colorado and 15 against the Padres. And here's as Drupal Cabrera. The switch hitter. Springs him left handed against the righty Bueller. Swing. And it's one and one. Yeah, you hear Dave Martinez say he's one of my most trusted clutch hitters. Well, he's putting him up right here in the seventh inning. He needs a big hit from him. Right on the fists, and he fouled it away. Turner shifts all the way over in the second base hole. Into center field, Bellinger makes the play. That ball hung up for him for the second out. Yes, Cabrera hit it pretty well. He did. He went down and got that pitch, hit it on the screws, but. Unfortunately, right at Bellinger. First stop, number seven, Trey Turner. See that nice swing down in the zone, but said hit it right at him. And I imagine it's going to be Bueller's last hitter now with the lefty on deck and Eaton. And at 111 pitches, this is his last guy. That matches his career high. Here's Trey Turner who was struck out twice and reached on a fielder's choice and now in his career he's 0 for 11 against Bueller. Breaking pitch missed. 2 and 0. Oh. 
The inning began with Kurt Suzuki hit by a pitch that hit his wrist and hit his head. He was replaced by Jan Gomes, who's the pinch runner at first. And after a Turner strikeout and a Cabrera line out to center, Trey Turner looking at a 2 1 count. Yeah, he's had him on that curveball and cutter slider combo all night. And Bueller wants a new baseball. You see Juan Soto, Jim Doan, those are guys that they're trying to get guys on base for and give them an opportunity. Sixth straight inning, but the Nats have had some traffic. Only once have they chased somebody in. That was in the sixth. The 2-2. Two -two. Oh. Boy, that did not miss by much. No, and I'll tell you, good, good call by Alfonso Marquez behind the plate. That ball's off the plate. You can see right here. It's so tough sometimes for those guys. The crowd gets going. The three two all four they're at first and second. Right field number two Adam Eaton. Dave Roberts is making his way toward Alfonso Marquez the home plate umpire. That's going to be it. For Walker Bueller. Clayton Kershaw begins the long walk from the Dodger bullpen. The plot thickens in the seventh. Let's go in a wayback machine, Frenchie, to uh, 2016 and the one career save for Clayton Kershaw. Got Wilmer Defoe for the final out at Nationals Park. Well, here in the seventh, Clayton Kershaw on in relief of Walker Bueller. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of become a every year thing for him. Now you see him come out of the pen a couple times. You see that pretty good numbers 2.79 five base on balls though I think that's the one thing usually starter starting pitchers like to get into the game get a feel he's got to come and throw strikes the call tonight presented by physicians mutual insurance for all of us Chris Taylor as they bring Kershaw in the double switch Chris Taylor is in left field. Kike Hernandez moves to second and Max Muncy from second to first. So Matt Beatty out of the game. That is one of the things about this Dodger team you truly appreciate is the versatility defensively of this team. Well, here we go. Eaton had an RBI single off of Kershaw the other night. Swings at the first pitch and follows it away. That's when Eaton's done his best work is on that first pitch. You see, he tried to go with it right there and fouled it off. Eaton is 0 for 3 tonight. Just under back. it. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, just under it right there. Got a good pitch to hit. Runners at first and second with two down. Big spot for Eaton. With the Nats down two. And now it's 0-2. 
even if you do swing at that one, Ernie, not much you can do with it. Better than 50,000 on their feet and screaming in Dodger Stadium. And he struck him out on three pitches. Time to stretch in L.A. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. How about the reaction of Clayton Kershaw to his three-pitch strikeout of Adam Eaton to end the top half of the seventh? Now, he's not the only one who was pumped up about it. I can see Walker. He appreciates that right there. Tanner Rainey is the new pitcher for Washington as Will Smith takes the first pitch 1-0. And you see those numbers right there, 48 innings, 38 walks, high strikeout, high walk guy. He would like to have that swing back. Ball and a strike, Jan Gomes is the new catcher. Came on when Kurt Suzuki was hit by a pitch. Ball that bounced off his wrist and off his head. He was taken from the game. Gomes pinch ran. Rainey pops him up. And Trey Turner with the squeeze for out number one. Time for the Geico game summary. If you're just joining us here, game five. Winner gets the Cardinals and Walker Bueller and Steven Strasburg, the starters. End of the night for both. They leave in a good tight game here, Jeff Francoeur. They do, and, and really the big thing of the game has been Muncy, Kike's home run. Two home runs for three runs. And honestly, coming in, I had it written down, a big advantage, I thought, for the Dodgers. Coming into tonight, seven home runs for the Dodgers, two for the Nats. If it turned into needing a long ball, that was the advantage for the Dodgers. Chris Taylor's first at bat of the night when they made that double switch. He came into the pitcher spot. Max Scherzer and Dave Martinez. Now, Dave Martinez told us, and look, you can hear a lot of talk before a game of this magnitude on any number of media outlets, and it's debated hotly. and. Dave Martinez says there is no way that Max Scherzer is going to pitch. He said he'll argue with me. He said, but I can't do that to him. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably what he's doing right there. You need me to go down there right now, Skip? In the air into foul territory. Will this thing stay playable? No. Off that screen. Over the fans on the first base side. Three one game in the bottom of the seventh. The 106 win Dodgers pushed to the limit in this NLDS by the wild card winning Washington Nationals. Last wild card winner in the National League to win in NLDS the Cubs in 2015. In the right center field there's Adam Eaton making a running catch. Off Taylor for out number two. And I would think at this point you're going to see Patrick Corbin come into this ball game to Thank face you. Jock Peterson. For 31, Jock Peterson. Dave Martinez on the top step, and here he comes. So Rainey did his job, faced the first two, got them both. And Corbin, the left-hander, makes his way into game five.
Patrick Corbin, the third Nationals pitcher here in game five. Alex, what you got on Patrick Corbin? EJ, after game three, Patrick Corbin just saying he felt like he let his teammates down. So he went into Davey Martinez's office, said that night he wanted to pitch out of the bullpen in game four, actually. But he was eager to get back on the mound and getting another big opportunity tonight, guys. Yes, he enters here with two down, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. Brought on to face the left-handed swinging Jock Peterson. With the left-handed swinging Max Muncy right behind him. Yeah, I, I promise you Dave Martinez had no problem throwing him back out there tonight. He's been a workhorse for him. He had a bad night the other night. But right now, he's your guy to keep it at 3-1. He started game one and was the losing pitcher against Bueller. Charged with the loss in relief in game three. And there's a strike to Peterson 0 and 1. And he's coming out throwing two fastballs tonight. I was wondering the other night, it got to the point where you felt like they were sitting on that slider, Ernie. So I think he's coming out trying to establish that a little bit. Maybe now he'll go to that slider. One ball, one strike to Peterson. Threw it past him at 95, one and two. Lefty into the wind and Peterson waves at strike three. So the Washington pen does its job. Tanner Rainey, Patrick Corbin, three up, three down. Let's take a look at Thursday's upcoming postseason schedule. Rays and Astros playing a game five on FS1 at seven. Rays forcing a game five. You know, Dave Martinez. Got the first hit in Rays franchise history. Way back in 1998. Now he would like to see some action out of that bat rack in the Washington dugout because they're down 3 1. Kershaw's back out there to start the eighth and he faces 3 4 and 5. Anthony Rendon takes 1 0. Oh. And there comes that curveball. It took a while to see the first curveball. He comes out on his fourth pitch of the night tonight and throws it. Kershaw came on. With two out in the seventh and struck out Adam Eaton with runners at first and second. Rendon in the air to left. Taylor goes back to the wall and it's gone. Anthony Rendon a leadoff homer in the eighth and it is a one run game. Over and don't get something down right here. I'm guessing that slider of his. And just gets it out to. Yeah, you can see it right there. I mean, it's a ball down, but he drops that bat head on it. You can say him and Soda are trying to do everything they can to keep this team in the game. Rendon is two out of four with a double and a homer and has scored both runs. The dance party in the Washington dugout. They're down one. And here's Juan Soto. In the air to deep right center field. And there she goes. We are tied. Wow, just like that. Two pitches, two solo shots. Another slider right here. And Soto was all over this pitch. Rendon's just snuck out. This one had plenty of distance. Dave Roberts has taken the ball from Kershaw here in the eighth. A strikeout in the seventh. 
and back to back Jackson in the eighth have this game tied with nobody out in the eighth. The Nationals had two home runs through four games in this series, and here in the eighth inning of game five, they go back to back. Rendon with one, and Soto with a tape measure shot to right center field to tie this game at three. Yeah, and you know a competitor like Kershaw, he can't believe it right now. And two sliders in a row. Slider to Rendon, that actually wasn't a bad pitch. That one right there to Soto was right down the middle. Kenta Maeda, who was pitched in games one, three, and four, now enters game five and throws a strike to Howie Kenta. And well, this is one of their most trusted right handed relievers right here, Maeda. He's going to be asked to keep this game knotted at three. Ball and a strike. Maeda's pitched three and two thirds, allowed one hit. No runs. Struck out four, hasn't walked a batter. Suddenly, here in the eighth, we are tied in game five. Wow, how things change, Frenchie, when you're sitting in a 3 1 game. Kershaw comes on in the seventh, strikes out Eaton. And then on back to back pitches here in the eighth. Well, and those Rendon are the two, and Soto. Yeah, and those are the two guys all year that have carried that team. Rendon leading the NL in RBIs, and Soto. Over 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, and both of those answer the bell tonight in the eighth inning. A ball and two strikes to Kendrick, who watches it sail outside two and two. And no one feels worse than that guy right there. Maeda strikes out Kendrick for out number one. There's that slider from Maeda that's so tough. You can argue and say he's been their best pitcher this series. Out of the pen for sure. Kershaw just stunned as our 53,000 here at Dodger Stadium. Well, and these are some of the best starting pitchers you have, Ernie, but at the same time, Corbin in game three, Kershaw here. Coming in is different. It's a different animal coming in from the pen. Zimmerman takes a strike. It's one and one. He singled in the second, called out on strikes in the fourth, and struck out in the sixth. He bats now in a tie game in the eighth inning. A winner take all game five, and there's another strike. One and two. Talk about Davey Martinez beating the Shake things up in the bat rack, and they have here in the eighth with back to back homers. And now the count even to Zimmerman. Same thing in the wild card game. They were able to hold that lead that the Brewers had at 3 0. Today, same thing. Three runs, first two innings. Strasburg and that bullpen have given this offense a chance to get back in it, and they've done it. Third time Zimmerman has struck out tonight. Two outs in the eighth. There's that slider again right there. He's so good at putting it right on the corner, as you see. Right there, there's nothing you can do with that pitch. You can see the emotion from him.
Now here's John Gomes hitting for the first time. Came into the game when Kurt Suzuki was hit by a pitch. Gomes hitless in the series 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. And Maeda's made him look bad on the first two. Good job by Gomes taking that one right there. And I, if I had to imagine, he's coming right back with it right here. It's been his best pitch this whole inning. There it was. Maeda comes on, strikes out the three guys he faced. But it was what happened at the beginning of the inning. Rendon, a homer off Kershaw. Soto took him deep. And all of a sudden, we are 3-3. Three, three. MLB at Home is presented by Wendy's. Grab your breakfast fave and get another for just a buck in the morning at Wendy's. Brand new ball game as we head to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Washington three, homestanding Dodgers three. Winner take all game five with the Cardinals waiting for him in the National League Championship Series. Patrick Corbin back out there in the eighth and Max Muncie takes the first pitch outside one and oh. Muncie homered in the first a two run shot. Dodgers haven't trailed in this game but they led by as much as three nothing. Now we're all even. And he takes outside 2 and 0. Well, and as Alex said, if Patrick Corbin wanted an opportunity to get back in a big game and make up for it, it's right here facing the 2 3 4 with your season on the line. He came on and struck out Peterson to end the seventh. And oh. there's a strike to Muncie. The Nationals in another elimination game. The wild card game is an elimination game. They won that coming from behind to beat Milwaukee. Popped up behind second. Trey Turner with the play one down. So Jeff we talk about what they've Justin faced Turner. again you beat Milwaukee that's an elimination game game four was an elimination game Zimmerman hits the big home run and here we are as they come back from three nothing down to tie things up. Yeah you can't say enough of what they've done they just continue to fight that's their huge thing stay in the fight and they've done it and now here you are in the eighth inning with a chance to go into the ninth with a chance to win this ball game score a run and you win they've given the Dodgers everything that they could ask for right now. What more could you want in the game five right now? You're exactly right. Justin Turner just got hit by a pitch. And he's on with one out. You hear some boos here, but the last thing in the world Patrick Corbin wanted to do was put anybody on base. That back foot slider and Turner, great job right there. Hey, listen, you know you need base runners right here. You see it. He turns that leg. I think it's hurting him a little bit, though. It got him right on that outside of the calf. And that brings up Cody Bellinger. Who has a hit in three trips. Still has never homered in this ballpark in his postseason career. Yeah, and 70 ABs. So. And still hasn't knocked in a run in this series. Well, and this was the matchup in game three that got the rally started for the Dodgers. Bellinger worked it to a 3 2 count, got a slider down, went out, got it, and started the rally. So he's seen Corbin, he's seen the sliders just a couple days ago. 
as that man says stay in the fight. That's what the Nats have done here in game five. Tying things up. Three three that was in tight. The veteran David Freeze has a bat in the on deck circle. Played in more playoff games than anybody wearing that Dodger uniform tonight. Ellinger waits and fouls it off. Didn't have a good swing. Well, Freeze was the other guy right there. Came in after striking out two times in game one. Got a 2 0 pitch. Didn't hit it hard, but used that right. Right gap on the right side of the infield to sneak one through to set up for that big two out double by Russell Martin. Yeah, during that, during that seven run inning that propelled the Dodgers to a game three win in Washington. Turner with a lead at first, Bellinger waiting. And Bellinger thought he got a pitch to hit right there. That ball kind of hung outer part of the plate but something he could drive and you talk about freeze on deck the moments not too big for him. We all remember what he did in 2011 with the Cardinals. So this guy loves these moments. Patrick Corbin the third Nationals pitcher. Game is now out of the hands of those starters. A couple of top drawer starters in this game, and Steven Strasburg and Walker Bueller. Dave Roberts going to the Clayton Kershaw well out of the bullpen. It worked for a moment. A strikeout. And then the roof fell in with back to back homers in the eighth. Bellinger are the good at bat here in the lefty lefty matchup. We saw in game three Corbin how quick it got away from him. Kershaw comes in three uh, three pitches strikeout. And then in three pitches two home runs and he's out of the game. Another one two to Bellinger. And he struck him out. And I'll tell you what set that up right there Ernie was that fastball he threw at 94. It got him thinking that he fouled it off and then he's able to come back with that pitch right there and get him to chase. Great sequence. Two down now for David Freeze. Oh. Freeze now 36 years old and the MVP of the World Series and the NLCS with the Cardinals back in 2011. A guy whose value cannot be overstated here. A guy that Justin Turner, the runner at first, told management after the World Series last year, we've got to have him back. Oh. I told the story when the series began that Turner refers to himself and guys like David Freeze with a bowling analogy. They're the bumpers that keep the kids on this team out of the gutter. Yeah, and they got some youngins on this team. A couple of rookies starting in this game five. No. Freeze tried to no. check, no. but went through with it. Trip Gibson says that was a swing. I think he definitely went and, and look you got Daniel Hudson warming up down in the bullpen so you might be wondering why he didn't bring him in. You got the lefty Seeger on deck so Dave Roberts is not going to pinch it for him in 
the pitcher's up second next inning. So I think this is Dave Martinez rolling the dice again, going with his veteran guy that's been here all year. Two balls and a strike, and the pitch to freeze. Cut right through at two and two. Breaking pitches don't get much better than that. As he had freeze out in front. Inside and missed. And it will be a full count. Which I think is a big deal with Turner at first. Not the fastest of guys. Decent speed. But with him moving right here on the 3 2 with two outs, a hit to the gap, Ernie can score him. This crowd's trying to get back in. I think they're still stunned from those back-to-back -back homers. They had kind of settled in in a 3-0 game. Yeah. And a comfort level. Runner going and freeze. Strikes out to end the eighth. How about this game five? We're going to the ninth. Tied. Tomorrow can only be better with Wendy's breakfast. Win with a breakfast baconator, honey butter chicken biscuit, sausage egg and Swiss croissant, or a maple bacon chicken croissant free with mobile order purchase. Tomorrow's looking good. Well, after a 13 to one game five in Atlanta, we owed you this one, folks. 3-3 three, three going to the ninth in game five between the Nats and the Dodgers. Joe Kelly comes on here in the ninth. And he faces Michael A. Taylor. Yeah, interesting call right here by Dave Roberts. Usually in this situation, you're going to Kenley Jansen, who's your closer. He has struggled some down the stretch. And this is a situation right here that, you know, in game five tells me he trusts Kelly right here. Quickly 0-2. Taylor has a single and three trips. He struck out his last time. That was against Walker Bueller. Here comes the 0 2, and that's down low and Taylor's had some huge hits in elimination games in the postseason a grand slam a three run homer. Yes they have come up short but at the same time this is a guy that's used to these moments he's been there might not play every day for the Nats this year but he's a guy with experience he's found himself in the lineup every day since the injury to Victor Robles a ball and two strikes and he fans to open the ninth. Good curveball right there. Sharp breaker. You know, I was a little wondering with Kelly, too, because he just pitched three days ago in that game three. Ernie walked three guys and gave up a hit, didn't even get an out. Well, he gets the leadoff man here in the ninth, and now he's got Matt Adams. Pinch hitter up there. Big City can hit it a country mile. And he takes a strike. Reminds me of that playoff game with the Phillies here at Dodger Stadium when Matt Stairs hit the home run. Matt Adams is sent up there to do one thing right now take a chance. He had that kind of a cut going to. And you see that stat. They know how to do it late. They did it in the eighth today. A 
They are screaming for foul balls right now at Dodger Stadium. This is a, a crowd, a huge crowd here that was enjoying every second of this game for seven innings. They led 3-1 going to the eighth. Clayton Kershaw was out of the bullpen. And then back-to-back -back home runs by Rendon and Soto tied the game. The 0-2 from Kelly to Adams. He struck him out. Two up and two down here in the ninth. Uh, you see Joe Kelly has been sharp today. Game three, couldn't find the strike zone, but this is a guy who's won the World Series with Boston last year. Had some huge games for them down the stretch. And now he struck out the first two guys here in the top of the ninth. Been five strikeouts by Nationals hitters since the back to back home runs. Maeda got three of them. Kelly's gotten the first two. Here's Trey Turner, leadoff hitter. So we're getting the game one Joe Kelly and not the game three Joe Kelly here in game five. Routine into right. A one two three inning for Joe Kelly Dodgers trying to walk it off in game five. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear with superior performing tires that knock it out of the park Goodyear more driven. Daniel Hudson. Nats closer in here in the night. Yeah just two and a half months ago. He's in Toronto. Now he's on the mound in the bottom of the ninth to keep the Nats season going. He has been great since he's been over here at Washington. Got a little nervous in game two here, but got a huge strikeout on this guy coming to the plate, Corey Seager, to end the game. Seager is 0 for 3 tonight. He struck out twice. He's three for 19 in the series without an RBI. And he takes a strike from Hudson to get things started here in the bottom half of the night. Dodgers have been so good at home this year. 12 walk off wins here at Dodger Stadium this year. So fans are accustomed to it. And I know that guy Clayton Kershaw would love another chance to pitch in the NLCS. On the ground wide of first and it's 0 and 2. Soto who's home run back to back with Rendon off of Kershaw tied this game in the eighth. And that's the thing if you're the Nats right now you look at it, if we can just get past this inning you got two three four coming up Eaton Rendon Soto who the last two games have been your offense. Seeger goes down swinging for out number one here in the ninth. 11th Dodger to strike out here in game five. And that is 63 in this series. And that's the 3 2 slider that he threw the other night to get Seeger and then got him on this one. That brings up Kike Hernandez. He homered in the second, and at the time, it gave the Dodgers a 3 0 lead. Uh, things have changed since then. Uh, 
And he gave him that three nothing lead. And I think everybody here at Dodger Stadium thought, okay, here we go. We're gonna roll. And you gotta give credit to the pitching of the Washington Nationals finding a way to put a bunch of zeros up on the board and give your offense a chance to get back in the game. Had a good cut at the 1-0. Now even a ball and a strike. Here it was in the bottom half of the second, leading off against Strasburg. This thing was a towering shot. It just got over that wall out of the reach of Michael A. Taylor. Hudson deals the 1 1 line drive base hit left field. The Dodgers have the winning run on with one down. Good swing right here. Fastball kind of in. Not a bad pitch, but at the same time, Hernandez pulls those hands in, and now he's a winning run at first base. And you can see this Dodgers team in there. They know they're in a fight right now. You talked to a lot of the hitters before this series, Ernie. They had the utmost respect for this starting pitching of the Nats and knew that it would be tough. Now, did they think it would come to this? Maybe not, but here we are. And here's Will Smith, the rookie, who in 54 games this year knocked in 42 runs. In the air to right field and well hit. Eaton goes back to the track and makes the catch. Hernandez back to first. Two down. Wow. Number three. I thought Will Smith just ended it right there. There's a hanging slider. And I don't know if you remember, but Dave Roberts told the two of us before game one that Will Smith would hit a big homer at some point. You see those guys thought he did too. They were trying to will it oh. over the wall and right. And that brings up Chris Taylor. Fernandez still at first now with two down. See the reaction from Will Smith. Yeah, he I can't tell if he thought he had it or he was he was watching it, it carefully. Close. Absolutely. He was like like he was watching a tee shot on a par <laughs> yeah. three. Look at the flag. Look at the ball. Does it have enough? He hits that ball in the first three four innings. Good chance that might be a home run. Nighttime here, the ball. Does not carry like it does early in the game. Taylor had a dozen home runs, knocked in 52 in 124 games, missed some time with a broken left forearm this year as Hudson throws over. In that part of this game now where one pitch, one swing, one decision can make all the difference. Good pitch. Hudson's got to keep that fastball down, slider down. You don't want to elevate anything to Taylor right here and give him a chance to end this thing. It's like I said, Ernie, that to me, the Nats chance if they can get out of this is the 10th inning. Eaton somehow gets on. If not, you have your two hottest hitters from Doan Soto, who the last two, three games have been seeing it again and hitting good.
Hit that one right on the nose to center, but into the glove of Michael A. Taylor. We are going to go extra innings in game five on TBS. Nationals franchise has one series victory to its credit. And that was as the Montreal Expos in 1981 as pitcher Steve Rogers, a two run single off Steve Carlton. And Rogers got Manny Trio to line out for the final out. The Expos won that series 3 2. They would go on to play the Dodgers and lose in five. Washington. That's always a good look, too, by the way, the old Expos have, man. It is a great Con hat. Conjures up thoughts of John Bacabella and Coco LaBoy. You know, though, you think about it, Ernie, this is kind of the Naps, how they've done things all year. They've made it tough on themselves, but somehow found a way to pull it. And when you really think about it, they've, they've been favored almost all four times when they've host, been in the NLDS, lost every single time, three in game five. You know, it's well, been hard all season. Just bitter disappointment at yep. home for fans to watch. But now on the road in this game five, down three nothing after Strasburg gave up a couple of home runs early. The Nats have battled back, used back to back home runs off reliever Clayton Kershaw in the eighth to tie the game. And here's Adam Eaton as we begin the tenth. Kelly delivers outside. Eaton was the first hitter that Kershaw faced in the bottom of the seventh. Kershaw came on, threw three pitches, struck him out. Yeah, at that point, you got the feeling this is his game. But that changed quick. That's when the eighth inning happened. And back to back homers by Rendon and Soto. Eaton leads it off after being chased to the wall by Will Smith in the bottom half of the ninth. And you can see he's really throwing that slider with some depth tonight something we didn't see in Washington in game three different Joe Kelly tonight he came on to start the ninth struck out Taylor and Adams got a fly ball out of Trey Turner and he's got to navigate a tough part of the Washington order here in the 10th. Eaton who can handle the bat. Rendon and then Soto. You see Kenley Jansen's up. So is Adam Kalerich. Kalerich's like the designated get Juan Soto out guy out of the. Yeah he didn't get to face him in game four. So it's like we got to have him here. But the way Soto's swinging the ball against all lefties. Kalerich might be the lefty that can get him out coming down from the side. Two balls and two strikes. And Eaton works a full count here leading off the 10. Just the second time we've gone to extra innings in a game five in the NLDS. Other was 2011 when Milwaukee beat Arizona in 10. Kelly delivering a 3 2 to Eaton. And it sails outside. The leadoff hitter is on here in the 10th. This is what happened in the top half of the eighth. Yeah, you see, Rendon hit this good. He didn't get it as much as Soto did, as you can see. This ball was absolutely crushed right here. Look at that, almost 450 feet. And when that ball was hit, not a single outfielder moved. And that's how they got back to 3-3. Big walk by 
Eaton right here to get on first. Here's Rendon has doubled and homered in his last two at bats. There was a, a borderline party atmosphere in here around the seventh inning stretch. And now 53,000 are afraid to move. Yeah, well, when Kershaw got eaten to strike out, I think this place was feeling it after that, thinking this would would be it. And now they're in a fight. Rendon fouled that straight back and looked to be on it. Good cut right there. This is when, to me, an advantage of a guy like Rendon, you got to have a slow heartbeat in these situations. I think we all know watching Rendon that he has that. Ninety nine, but down low. Thing about Rendon, very few swings and misses, only 5.5 percent of the time. And he got eaten with good speed at first. One ball, two strikes. We're at two and two. Yeah, Rendon's a lot like Max Muncy to me for the Dodgers. You can get them 0-2, Ernie, but it, the toughest thing is to put them away because of what you just said. They don't swing and miss much, and they have a great idea of the strike zone. In the air to left field. Taylor goes back. It's off the wall. They will be at second and third. As Rendon delivers for the third straight at bat. Well you see right here he gets a hanger. He took two pitches to get it back to 2 2. And there it comes again Ernie when I'm telling you. The idea that you can slow yourself down, slow your mind, slow your body. Not many better than Rendon. And you see the ball stuck there. For the second time yeah. tonight, we have a ball wedged, which will be a ground rule double. It happened with Jock Peterson as the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the first before the home run by Muncie. And it happens here as Rendon plants one in left field. Yeah, so two balls now have gotten stuck in the fence. Really wouldn't have mattered on that one, though. That was going to be a double, second and third. And now it's smart to me. you got to walk Soto right here. This is not the guy you can let beat you. Yeah. You, you look at the speed that Eaton has. You wonder if that ball comes off the wall. If he's able to score, you're not thinking so, no, Frenchy. Well, you're not going to, you don't want to get him thrown out if it's bang, bang, when you have a chance now to have the bases loaded and no outs. And it's Howie Kendrick who steps in, infield in for the Dodgers. Rounded foul past third. So a walk to Eaton. Ground rule double by Rendon. Intentional pass to Soto. And here's Kendrick. Got to give this Nats offense a lot of credit. They have battled tonight. Couldn't get anything early. Now they've taken advantage. This is deep to center field. Bellinger's back. It's 
it's a grand slam! Howie Kendrick with a 10th inning grand slam to break it open. Wow. It is seven to three, the former Dodger breaking hearts in Los Angeles. You talk about staying through a ball and look, there's fans leaving already. And they are shocked at what the Nats have been able to do in the eighth and now the 10th with a grand slam by Howie Kendrick. Dead center. Stunned silence at Chavez Ravine. The only noise coming out of that Washington dugout as Zimmerman swings and misses. Let's take another look at this. Tried to go a two seamer right here, trying to get that rollover. And Kendrick, as good as anybody, staying inside the ball and going the other way. Lined out to Bellinger, caught it at the wall. That one, he got enough. And for the errors he's made this series, you know that made up for it and more. Zimmerman takes one in the dirt. At Nationals Park, where they're having a viewing party on that big board. Just the second career grand slam for Howie Kendrick, who's been Ooh. around for a while and is first in the post. Unbelievable. Right here, Ernie, look, he's trying to go two seam right here to get him to roll over. And do you see how Kendrick drops those hands and stays inside the ball? His idea right there is I'm getting a sack fly getting that one run in. By having the right approach, he ends up getting all four guys in. Great job by Howie. Like you said, after a series where he's made three errors. Here's another look. And that's where, to me, having a veteran guy like Howie Kendrick can come into play right there. And we've said it, the Nats have battled back all year, 19 and 31, and now they're three outs away from the NLCS. In the air to left to Taylor from the bat of Zimmerman for out number one. Back in 2015, they had a game five here, the Mets and the Dodgers. And Howie Kendrick was wearing the Dodger colors then. Struck out to end the game as the Mets beat him three to two. And here at Dodger Stadium tonight, wearing the Nationals colors, he crushes a grand slam to straightaway center field here in the 10th to break a 3-3 tie. Well, when you have your biggest games, you need the heart of the order to step up. You need the guys that make the money, the guys that get paid. And tonight, 3-4-5 for the Nats, three home runs and seven RBIs. Jan Gomes waits and takes a strike. Sean Doolittle, the only lefty out there in the bullpen. Patrick Corbin, a starter used in relief tonight. And Gomes sneaks one into right field for his first hit of the series. And he's aboard with one down here in the 10th. Number three, Michael A. Taylor. Dave Roberts on his way to the mound. Kenley Jansen will now make his appearance in game five. 
as Joe Kelly departs after giving up the walk. Double to Rendon. Intentional walk to Soto and the grand slam by that guy, Howie Kendrick. And, and if the Nats hang on to this game, I think the first question Dave Roberts is going to be asked after Ernie, and I know Joe Kelly had a great ninth, ninth inning, but well, why made, was your closer not in the game? You made the point when we went to the ninth that you said, here comes Kelly, normally Jansen's spot. Here again, the dramatics by Howie Kendrick. And great job by Kendrick again. I know I've said it, but staying inside the ball, trying to get one run in, and instead he gets the whole thing and comes out with the biggest hit of his career. The thing is, too, you talk about, you know, making that last out against the, the Mets in that series, but also he was on that Dodger team that beat Washington in game five in Washington in another one of those NLDS losses and tonight he's put them up by four as the Nats try to do something they've never done. Now and you talk about Jansen and not being in this game. There was talk you know about him not having his best stuff down the stretch. We did see him in game three in Washington. He came in one inning pitch two strikeouts. I thought his cutter looked really good and I'm sure for him right now he wanted to be out there in that situation. So he comes on here in the 10th, trying to keep the uh, deficit where it is right now. You talk about Kendrick and the, had some issues with the glove in this series. Had two errors in game one. The base running mistake here that in game three that took them out of a bases loaded when they were trying to come back on the Dodgers. And then tonight in the third inning, he gets a ground ball routine goes right between the legs. But as you can tell, that's why the guys, that's why Dave Martinez st stuck with him. They know his, what he's made of. And right there, you see it, he knew it. His longtime manager with the Angels, Mike Sosha, hung the nickname truck on him. And the Dodgers feel like they've been hit by one here in the 10th. First pitch to Michael A. Taylor has popped up. And that is out number two. And Brian Dozier's got a bat he's going to hit here in the 10th. Hey, that ball I don't think had even landed in center field and I could see people getting up walking to the exits here. I think they're just stunned. The Dodgers in the course of their 106 win season 48 come from behind wins 24 in their last at bat. And they will face a deficit of at least four. Going to the last of the tenth. Absolutely a game changing and possibly franchise chasing swing by Howie Kendrick. If the Nats are able to hang on in the tenth. A strike from Jansen. And that's a crazy thing Ernie like we talked about to be favorites in almost all four of your NLDS is lose three of them all at home. And then here you start 1931 you come on the road to face a team that's won 106 games and quite frankly dominated the National League. Kept showing Mike Rizzo down there though I think. He knows they still have to get three outs. He's and, seen some heartbreak. And the top of the order in the 10th for the Dodgers. That is Mike Rizzo, who's watched some of his teams 
with such high expectations in years past fall short. Think back to 2012, and perhaps the most painful one for the Nats and their fans to live through was the NLDS against the Cardinals, where they led by four in the ninth with two outs and lost the series. But tonight, they have claimed a four run lead in the top half of the tenth as Dozier pops that up. Seeger. Makes the play. The Dodgers will come to the plate in the bottom of the tenth, needing four to tie. We'll be back. This is not part of this franchise, but the last team from the city of Washington, the Senators, 1924 with the Walter Big Train Johnson. Now you're going back and this is I, I remember this action. one. <laughs> yeah, you do the world champs of 1924. Of that's part of the Minnesota Twins franchise. And here, Howie Kendrick going to watch the rest of this one as Sean Doolittle comes on in the 10th. It's like Brian Dozier's at second base now. Yeah, Doolittle was asked to do a lot out of the bullpen this year. And towards the middle of the season, even Dave Martinez says, I've overused this guy. We've had no choice at times with the status of their bullpen. That's why they went and got Hudson. Only fitting that he's the guy out there with the chance to send them to the NLCS. 29 out of 35 and save chances and had some time on the injured list with right knee tendonitis. And right now he stands on the mound at Dodger Stadium three outs away from helping the Nats get to the National League Championship Series for the first time. A.J. Pollock will pinch hit to lead it off. It has been a major struggle in this series for Pollock who checked his swing but he went as they checked down to Trip Gibson at first. Pollock looking for his first hit of this series. He's 0 for 12 with 10 strikeouts. And that's why he found himself on the bench tonight in game five. And quickly Doolittle is ahead. No balls and two strikes. Didn't yep. we just figure he'd find his way down there at some point? No matter what anybody says, I'm going to go down there. <laughs> we haven't seen him throw a pitch. No. Doolittle to the plate with the 0-2, oh. and he ran it inside and missed. Howie Kendrick's grand slam in the top half of this inning broke a 3 3 tie. The Nats have scored the last seven runs of this game after falling behind 3 0. And Sean Doolittle to the plate missed again. 2 and 2. Max Muncy is on deck. Muncy hit a homer off him in game two here. And for all intents and purposes, he hit a home run off him in game four. It just didn't go out. The wind killed it. So important to get Pollock here for Doolittle. And he did. Struck him out to start the 10th. First baseman number 13, Max Hudson. Just a fastball, climb the zone a little bit. Good pitch to 
hit right here and missed his spot, and Pollock just swung right through it. And he did the important thing there. The last thing you want to do is give them something they didn't earn. You don't want to walk the leadoff hitter. Started him out 0-2. Count was even, then he blew him away. Now here's Muncie with one down, nobody on. They load up the right side defensively. And Muncie takes strike one. You hear all the time people have different mottos, you know, and sometimes you're like, ah, that's great, you know, cliche, but stay in the fight really might be the most perfect motto for this team. Backs against the wall in the wild card game. Win. Lose game one out here. You can't go 2 0 down here at Dodger Stadium and go back home. They win that. 2 1 in game four, win that, and now tonight. Dodgers haven't lost consecutive games since September 6th and 7th. Nats trying to hand them a second straight loss in this series and move on. A 106 win Dodger team on the ropes at home in game five. On the ground to first. The race to the bag won by Zimmerman. Two out. Your base at number 10, Justin Turner. And I think a lot of the reason L.A. felt so good about this game five, and they should have. Fueler pitched fantastic tonight. They're 59 and 22 at this building here. But as we said, when one game comes down to it, anything can happen. Braves lost game five in Atlanta, got blown out 13 to one. Dodgers down to their last out as Justin Turner stands in. Cody Bellinger is on deck. Dodgers need a lot of traffic. If they're going to do something about a four run deficit down to their final out. Pointed out earlier, no team with this many wins has ever lost at this stage. The NLDS or the ALDS. Behind second, and that is going to be caught by Michael A. Taylor. And the Washington Nationals have knocked out a heavyweight in 10. They beat the Dodgers in game five. Well, I think that ball bobbled around too, went up in the air, and he caught it to win. And for the first time, the Nationals can celebrate moving on to the National League Championship Series. And I think they're going to make them wait a second. They're. I think asking this to go to replay. See if we can see a replay here to see if he caught it. Oh yeah, that's ball game. He was juggling it, but it never found grass. Will Little, the second base umpire, was out there taking a look at it. What a catch to end. We wait for the official word. As the headsets are just now being put on. There's look at Max Scherzer comes out of hiding in the bullpen. Look at that. And that's a quick replay. You see Ted Barrett. Ball game. 
the Nationals can now celebrate officially. Wow. I'll tell you what, partner. They, they did. They stayed in the fight three to one. Strasburg, not the greatest stuff early, kept them in the game. And now that's their 12th win after trailing by three or more runs and the biggest win of the Washington Nationals history. A stunning NLDS loss for the Dodgers after a 106 win season. And the Nats, who had to win the wild card game, come from behind to do that, had to fight off elimination in game four, fell behind 3 0 in game five, and then scored the next seven runs of the ball game. That's why you have to play the whole game. And there's the <laughs> star Howie Kendrick. There's six outs away facing Josh Hader in the wild card game from not even being in this. And now here they are flying to St. Louis to start the NLCS. Look at Ryan Zimmerman. He's been here for all that disappointment. And Dave Roberts and the Dodgers absolutely stunned here yeah. at home in game five. Yeah, they're going to be able to look back and see some missed opportunities. You know, Bellinger, Seeger, the way they hit this series. But at the other side, I, you got to give a lot of credit to the Washington Nationals, the way they played, the way the pitching staff went. They rode those three starters. And you think. You think back to how this game played out when Bueller gives up one run in six and two thirds. Dave Roberts had talked about the piggyback. I want to bring Kershaw in right after Bueller. Kershaw comes in, strikes out Eaton to end the seventh, comes out for the eighth, and then Rendon and Soto go back to back to tie the game. And then in the tenth, Howie Kendrick unloads a Grand slam home run to straightaway center field. And the Nationals are in the National League Championship Series. Let's go down to Alex Chapel. Alex. Thanks, EJ. I'm with Howie Kendrick and Howie. Tie game with a spot in the NLE NLCS on the line. You're facing Joe Kelly, second pitch, grand slam. How would you describe the moment? You know what? It was electric. Probably the best moment in my career. After a hard-fought game, Strasburg did a heck of a job tonight. Soto, Tony tied the game up. I mean, you know, extra innings too. I mean, it's it, you couldn't make this up, you know, and it's it's definitely a dream come true. You just said it was the best moment of your career. This series, it's been challenging at times. So how satisfying was that just to be the guy to come through in such a big way for the Nats? You know what? There's no success without effort or error. So, you know, being out here, being able to play and have an opportunity to do what I did tonight, you know, it's truly a blessing, you know, and to have the, the teammates uh, in the in team. This is gone, the ups, the downs, you know, I don't think any of us would change it for anything. Howie, this was a ball club that went 19 and 31 to start the season. Now here you are headed to the NLCS. What makes this group so special? You know what? We never gave up. Uh, you know, the, the city had faith in us. The fans had faith in us. We believed in ourselves. You know, everybody came through for us. I mean, every guy on this roster and some guys that aren't, you know, they stepped up and did a great job. Howie, thanks for the time. EJ? Thank you, Alex. The Washington Nationals going to enjoy each and every second of this when you think about how many times they've watched guys celebrate on their field. They've come close but never able to break through and get to the NLCS. But this year is different. And here at Dodger Stadium, they have gotten it done. Not only the big blow by Howie Kendrick, but a bullpen in the last two games with six shutout innings. Final score seven to three and ten for Jeff Francoeur and Alex Chapel, Ernie Johnson saying good night from Los Angeles. Let's get to Atlanta.